What's going on, everybody? It is Andre Dorsey back with the DM Gaming Show. Y'all, look, we had some technical difficulties. I'm trying to get that stuff straightened out. Um, I'm trying to get to where we was live. We used to go live on um, YouTube, uh, but it's not working, man. For some reason, I don't know. But it's everything's going to be fine. Everything's all good. How about we do this here? Yeah. What's up, Twitter? How <laughs> we live, yeah. So the DM Gaming Show, y'all. Follow us on Twitter at DM Gaming Five. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash c forward slash dm gaming and follow the link that's on the twitter and it'll take you to the speaker website you may have to set up an account but it is free that'll let you hop into the chat until we can get the situation with youtube fixed because it did stream straight to youtube but i don't know i digress but welcome to the show everybody so get everybody in here there you go. There you go. There you go. Yes, sir. So, thankful to be here today, man. I hope Rex and them tuning in or we'll watch this later on the DM Gaming Show Madden Edition. So, we will be discussing Madden all day today. Yeah. Yeah, we will. No pictures, please. <laughs> but yeah man so madden 18 y'all has been out um and now a new year has rolled around and we're getting ready to well not getting ready us here at dm gaming we've already been uh kind of talking and discussing about the things that we would like to see in the next rendition of madden nfl uh football and um Bam, look at that morning shot, y'all. Hair is a mess, but anyway, it is what it is. So, y'all, we've been talking already about um, some of the things that we would like to see in in Madden 19, and it is very important and imperative that that you begin to start to voice what you would like to see in the game. Now, uh, the reason why is because if you wait till EA play, if you wait till a couple of months, uh, before the release, it's more than likely too late. I know Rex tweeted out something earlier talking about how he wanted to get, um, was getting stuff together for music on the intro. And speaking of music for the intro, now y'all, I wanted, I did this song for that. It's called Hit Him in the Mouth. You ain't checked it out. I'm finna play it. Um, but I can't use it because unfortunately, um, I couldn't obtain um the publishing rights for this song but i want to play it for those of you who didn't hear it just to check out a little bit of talent for your boy so let, let's go ahead and run it tim what's going on man good morning let's see how see how that played
So yeah, man, that is the uh, that is the, the real thing we did, you know. A little shout out to myself for that, man. But it it was fun. It was definitely fun. Now, y'all, for those of y'all who've been looking at this live on Twitter, I don't know how long this feed will last. Uh, but head over to the Spreaker, and you can hop into the live chat, or you can get on Twitter and just tweet something out, you know. So, but anyway, y'all, that's so that's the song that I did. Wanting to get that into the game, but unfortunately, like I said, I couldn't get the publishing rights for that that instrumental for the song. But just still wanted to share that to showcase some of the talents, man. Rex, get at me, man. I will do a song for Madden. Let me let me hit up the intro, man. Let me do something like that. I don't know. But anyway, y'all, so Madden 18, the good, the bad, the ugly, we played it. Some of us are still playing it. What do you like about it? What do you don't like about it? I know a lot of people, well, not a lot of people. I think there was a handful of people, the franchise mode players, felt left out for this edition. And, well, I would say 17 and 16 as well. Now, there were small things added uh, to that. But um, those things that were added were... Lackluster. I mean, they added practice squad. Okay, that was that was decent. That was to me the most significant thing uh, of the smaller things that were added. Uh, but the thing about it is, and here's my issue with it, is that it doesn't pack a punch. When you look at the NFL now, and you look at football in real life, practice is key to success. Your game planning, your practice, your rest days. Your workouts, all of those things play a key factor in your victory. Practice squads aren't taken lightly in the NFL. These guys make hundred, probably about a hundred thousand dollars a year just being on a practice squad. There are players who were pulled from practice squads that made NFL rosters and not only made rosters, but made huge impacts on those rosters as well. And I just feel like Madden doesn't capture that essence. The same way happens with free agency and Madden. And in Madden. Free agency doesn't make that big of an impact on your team and the draft. So really the offseason and practice squad, and that's something I would like to see changed in Madden 19. Make those things weigh heavily. Now, they did add some things with franchise, uh, I mean, not with franchise mode, but with um, free agency to where certain players, it's just harder to sign them. That is more realistic, and I like that because if a player doesn't fit your scheme and based off of your depth chart and things like that, Players may be a little weary or cautious to sign with you. And I do like that aspect. But like I said, how many teams have gone big in free agency, getting these players that they think would make a huge impact, and these players come in and don't produce, and it literally um, turns their season upside down. The same way with the draft, even more so with the draft, with the NFL draft. A bad draft pick. Cleveland Browns are notorious for this. Picking up these guys mostly quarterbacks, and they're not solidifying their offensive front, their defensive front, and things of that nature. And it just, it hurts the team. We've seen it. Ryan Lee drafted to the Chargers. Huge mistake for them, you know, drafting that guy. It was a bust. Draft busts need to be more prevalent, as well as draft gems, you know, finding that diamond in the rough in a sense, you know, like Tom Brady, perfect example, a guy that was drafted in the very late rounds. Kurt Warner is another one, you know. Um, those things need to play a big factor. So does free agents, picking up free agents, you know, and stuff like that. I feel like those things need to play a bigger role in the game. It needs to be more of a calculated risk. Uh, and it needs, there needs to be something in the game with the risk versus reward kind of thing. I I think that, uh, the fans would appreciate that. That would add more to the realism of the game because all of us who have played football knows that, a, a, a bad draft pick, a bad uh, pickup in free agency, something like that can seriously affect your team and, and can really derail your season or it can do the opposite. It can, it can um, put you on the right track for success. So, Rex, if y'all listen to me, that's something that's just a little tidbit thing to make add to the realism of the game. Um, also, gameplay or game plan. Um and practice. I like practice, but okay, here's the thing with franchise mode. When we play career mode and franchise mode, we want to we want it to feel as simulation as possible, you know, because the majority of us aren't able to um Tim said what what do I think of Alex Smith traded to the Redskins? 
I, I'm not sure what to think about that just yet. I think that um, Alex Smith, he's a good quarterback, you know, but I think the Redskins messed it up by by not keeping Cousins. I think that that hurt them. But I think Alex Smith, he'll do well there. I don't think he'll do bad, but I don't think that he will be a player that will come in and turn this franchise on 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 the right side. I don't think he comes in and makes that big of an impact that we're talking about them uh, come playoff season, you know, playoff part of the season next year. But I digress. But game planning, y'all, game planning is something that I feel like needs more attention. Um, whenever I think back to NCAA, NCAA immersed you in career mode. I mean, because me, I played college football, but I wasn't recruited. And and people play games to relive and to live things that they never got to live before. And for me, playing that, I was able to immerse myself in that and have the feeling of, man, you know, I'm getting recruited. You know, I'm, you know, just that whole process, man, I'm racking up yards. I need to play good so I look good for the scouts, so I help my team win, things like that. Let's make the playoffs. Let's go to state. Let's win state. Things like that. You know, I don't get that same sense when I play Madden. And that's, I think a lot of players will agree with that. You don't get that whole sense of um, of immersion and, and where you can kind of project yourself into the game. Um, even to picking where you want to, what scholarship you want to accept in NCAA and things like that, and then working to become the starter um, you know, those things I feel like needs to be in Madden with their career mode. And not only that, but, you know, once you're a starter in those games, you're solidified as a starter. I don't like that. Let's make it realistic. If you are a starter and you are not producing, the backup should equally have the same right to take your position again. That will add to the realism. That will help people to get into practice mode in the franchise and stay in practice mode because if you don't practice then your player doesn't get better and you fall off now that's going to be a big challenge because you're going to have to put something into practice mode and game planning that's going to keep people there keep people immersed and keep people not wanting to skip it simple solution to that is the same way that you have once you complete a drill now in your game game prep uh once you get that silver gold medal or whatever uh, you could keep that same system for practice mode in the future to where if I do this drill, if I go to this practice and I run this specific drill or whatever the case may be, I get silver, gold, bronze, whatever, then I don't have to run that again unless I want to. And if I want to skip it, I can skip it and, and maintain whatever medal that I had previously. Now, here's the catch. Say you do that drill and you get a bronze medal. And you get X amount of experience or whatever. Excuse me. Your computer, the the second string is going to be running those same drills. And they may get a silver. Now, you may be ahead of them on the depth chart. But if you continue to just skip that drill and continue maintaining those bronze medals while you're, you're, the backup is doing those drills getting silver medals, eventually he's going to get the green light to start. Because what's going to happen, what the game should implement is is more of, as far as the depth chart is concerned, the depth chart should be in the game based more off production. Production, I feel like, should be a statistic or an attribute in franchise mode. That's what I'm getting at right there. And doing these drills will build your production meter along with actually producing in the game. Yes, have a production bar or franchise mode, or career mode, that if you keep this production bar up, that that maintains your status as a starter, or whatever the case may be. And to add to that, like I said, how you perform in practice, your experience from practice will go into that production meter, as well as how you perform in the game. That will add simple realism to career mode, and I think people will love that, because it's going to make you get in practice and grind, it's going to make you get out there and make sure that you perform in those games so that you maintain your status as a starter. Now, here's another awesome thing that bleeds off of that is in the off season, uh, say your contract is up and you, you're a free agent. Well, teams are going to look at that production meter, say, how does this guy practice? How does this guy perform? And that's going to affect what teams are interested in you in free agency, as well as what contract you're going to get. How does that sound? y'all? Beautiful. 
Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Sounds really cool, man. So, y'all, I just wanted to pl- I want to I want to kind of switch gears a little bit, but before I do, man, I want to take you back old school with a little bit of Madden um Madden 96. This was the Madden that got me into it. And and I'm going to play this and after I play this, I'm going to get into why I played it and what it has me thinking about. So, let's let's hear it here. Yes, good old Mad 96. And I didn't get the rest of it because whatever. But that's the part that I love. Mad 96 was the Madden that got me into Madden. And the reason I play that is for the next topic. And that is in, if we are to get a career mode, hopefully we do, that in those drills or preparing for those drills, allow us to be able to run our 40s again. Allow us to do player drills that we were able to do in previous Maddens as well as previous NCAA titles. <coughs> Rex, <coughs> you worked on them. But anyway, but don't do the 40 like y'all did in, in previous Madden with the analogs. That is atrocious. And do you see this? Look at that. That is, I mean, with the PlayStation 4 controllers, the way that the analogs are set up, uh, let's, let's turn it around here. Back, if, for those of y'all who don't know, you had to run the 40 flicking these down simultaneously and i can't flick the other one because i'm holding the phone of course but you had to flick these down now with the playstation 4 controller it may work a little bit better because these are smaller and closer together as well as they have these grooves to where you kind of get a better grip however scratch that we don't want that let's take it back to mad 96 where you just simply tap those two buttons right there or not necessarily these two buttons because it wasn't on the playstation it was on the sega genesis but have it to where you can tap those buttons, two buttons to where you can run your 40 yard dash. And y'all, that will be awesome. Now, here's the thing, because somebody like me who's skilled like that, I'm going to run like three, seven, three, sixes, you know, whatever. So to prevent people from running like abnormally fast times, you can have it to where whenever you're running your 40, Implement something that's going to determine what kind of start you get. And based off of that start, then, you know, you go into actually running your 40. Because everybody who's ran the 40-yard dash knows how important your start is. Your start is everything, man. I mean, even in track, unless you're Usain Bolt, who can't get a good start, but still can break world records. So that's why I bought up Mad 96. Because in career mode, you know, we, we saw long shot in Madden 18, correct? And a lot of stuff was shown in long shot that I feel like could be easily transferred over to a career mode. That is the draft. That is going through actual drills at the combine. Now, here's the thing. And I spoke about this in a previous video, the video that I did yesterday on the page. So check it out. And that's college influence in career mode. So they had Texas and Oregon this year and it was for long shot, but you could play them with them in mud. And I was upset about that because I kind of want to do a little play now with them, but I digress. So it went well. There was no backlash from it. And y'all, like I said in another video, and this is kind of off topic, that it could open the door for NCAA to come back. They need to look at that because it worked out. Generic rosters, I don't see what's the problem. Texas got a lot of exposure from it. Derrick K. Royal Stadium got a lot of exposure from it. Oregon got some exposure from it. So I imagine that other schools will hop on board, not the full NCAA. Otherwise you could just make NCAA game, but I could see similar to how they did in um, NCAA football 14 with uh, your career mode, how you start out in high school playoffs and stuff like that. Maybe you get two, two more schools on board. So you'll have a total of four teams that you'll be able to pick from to play your start your college career in a sense. But with four teams, guess where it's going to start? You guessed it, the college playoffs. Yes. Yes. That's going to give the NCAA exposure. That's going to give the national championship exposure as well, implementing that into Madden. And so you could pick one of those four teams to start the college playoff with. It's only two games, of course, but still. And determining off of those games determines and affects your draft stock as well as your performance and production. Remember, don't forget about the production thing in there. And so once you do that, um, then they could implement some kind of 
senior bowl doesn't have to be the authentic senior bowl but it could be some kind of senior bowl that that will affect your draft stock as well that would give you at least three games to actually play and after that you will have the combine where you do simple drills now y'all that's not a problem because madden has implemented combine drills in both ncaa and madden before so it's nothing new but also pro day so that way if you don't have a good combine you can still have a good pro day. Now, here's the catch. Because the combine is weighed more heavily than the pro day. Make it to where, okay, say I have a bad pro day, uh, but I have an awesome uh, combine. Well, the combine weighs heavily, so I'm going to get a better grade. Now, if I have a bad combine, but I have an awesome pro day, then I'll have a better grade. Let's say if I have an awesome combine and an awesome pro day, I get an A plus for my draft grade. But I have a good combine, an awesome combine and a bad pro day, let's say that's more like an A or an A minus. Or if I have a bad combine and I have an awesome pro day, let it be like a B or something to that effect. You get what I'm saying? That way the pro day weighs the 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 combine weighs more heavily than the pro day because in reality it kind of does for the most part um and and you can implement that and then after that you go into the draft and and you start your your franchise or your career and stuff like that and then in your career you can have a lot of different things um interviews uh i would like to see sponsorships things like that that they can implement into career mode as well as your training your durability, your workouts, your planning, and things like that. I think that training is something that hasn't been really looked at in Madden. Uh, Weightlifting is key in sports. How you train with plyometrics, weightlifting, things like that. Those things are key in Madden and, I mean, in football in real life. Um, But it doesn't, it's not represented in Madden very well or at all, really. I think the last game that may have looked at that kind of stuff was maybe NFL 2K5 where you can actually adjust. No, it was it was head coach. I think it was NFL head coach where you can actually set up for your players to lift weights, condition, and stuff like that. Let those things play a factor. Uh, let those things play a factor inside of the game. For instance, conditioning is very important, very important. So is your durability. So is your straight training and, and your, your speed training. So let us in career mode be able to do those things. We are able to do them in UFC. That's an EA Sports title. We were, you know, why aren't we able to do it in Madden, you know, in in a career mode? So Rex, if you're listening, and y'all, I'm not expecting to get all of these things into one game, uh, but if they could be periodically added over time or something like that, hey, that's awesome. You know, that's something in in the right direction. So uh, I think that would make for an awesome career mode, y'all. But next up, y'all, I got to hit y'all with the my favorite intro to Madden, which is the 2000 intro. So let's let's take a listen on that before we change gears to the next topic. Favorite intros, man. 
I remember when they first played that, I was like, dude, that was awesome. That and then Ray Lewis's intro, which it wasn't a song. It was just Ray talking. But when Ray talked, man, you got to listen. You know what I'm saying? But I want y'all to let, let, let's let's take a vote, man. Who who did it better? Was it me with hit him in the mouth? Or was it Luda with the 2000 intro? Let's we're gonna take a poll on Twitter or whatever. Uh just just do hashtag DM gaming or hashtag 2000 intro or ludicrous. It don't matter, man. Whatever. But changing gears up, y'all. So talk a little bit about career mode. Now I want to talk more about franchise mode. So the overall encompassing um franchise mode and the route that we that i would like for madden 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 to go in franchise mode is just to make it feel more authentic and um listening at a lot of rex's interviews that's exactly the route that he wants to go now if y'all missed last pot the other podcast um i'm gonna just repeat this for the sake of new people who may not have heard uh rex is the creative director for madden He's a part of the development team. He is not a part of the executive office in a sense. Um, This is a battle that a lot of people who don't understand how video games work uh, don't understand this. But being a developer, you are subject to the publisher. The publisher at the end of the day says, this is what we want to put in the game. This is the direction that we want to go. Make it happen. Now, there is some room for development influence. Uh, but I mean, it's a, it should be a symbiotic relationship between the publisher and the developer. Now I know that Rex, y'all may not believe this, but I believe it because I understand how video games work. And I've seen what happens when Rex is given, uh, more control over what's in the games that he is the creative director over. Look at the NCAA series. Y'all love it. Well, guess what? Your boy Rex Dixon worked on those games. Um, I, I wish that the the executives at Madden, I mean at EA, would give them more control. Um, and and y'all, we have to understand this. At the end of the day, it is a business, and they are in business to make money. Um, Rex and and the crew, you know, they only get so much say so, you know. And then Madden eighteen is a perfect example of that because they wanted uh, the develop the executives wanted to implement long shot into the game. And long shot is just like the journey for FIFA. It's a pipeline into Ultimate Team. And it was successful for Madden, believe it or not. It was successful. Madden, I think, was number four on the list of games sold this year, this past year. And Mutt had an increase in players. Um, and what's going to happen is those executives are going to look at that and they're going to say, well, we had an increase in Mutt players. We had an increase in sales. So they're going to look and say, what was different? They're going to say, well, we implemented long shot. So y'all listen to me. Rex said it. He said, if you want to go more towards a career mode, let them know. Otherwise, they're going to end up doing a long shot season two. So y'all, now is the time to voice your, 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 your wants. And I can be guaranteed that the majority, if not all, the community wants a career mode. But if you are not saying it, it will not happen. Nobody's even playing long shot anymore. I don't know anybody that played it. I made a prediction early on. Once I seen what long shot was, I said, you know what? This is something that somebody's going to play once or twice and we'll never hear about it again. And we haven't. Yet long shot did its job in selling copies of a game. And leading people more into mud because after long shot, you're directed straight into mud. And that's the stuff that these executives are looking for. I mean, because at the end of the day, they're looking for the bottom line. The developers are the ones who love the games. The executives don't necessarily love video games. Some of them probably don't even play video games. Their job is basically the management system to bring the company money. The developers are the ones who love playing games and things like that. And and, and that's the relationship that you see on Twitter, Rex and, and Clint you know actually out there playing the games and stuff like that uh that's the relationship that you see with the developers and when the developers are given more control over a game you actually see a lot better games um i tweeted out you know to rex that um that i understand basically i understand that that you know if 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 the executives will give the fans what they want we will make madden the number one selling game i don't doubt that and and here's the thing 
Because people are saying, well, Madden 19 is not going to be that good. It's just going to be the same old, same old. EA cannot afford to put out another title like they did with Madden 18. Now, don't get me wrong. Madden 18 has a great foundation to build on. But without any additions to franchise mode, man, it's going to be tough. Because let's be real. All the gameplay improvements, the DB one-on-one, Rex, I love that. I'm a DB, man. I played corner in college, played corner in high school, played a lot of positions in high school. But I played corner in college. Semi-pro, love the position. And we talked about a lot of the on the live streams of Madden 17 how when I was playing my cornerback career that um, that I wish that they would have implemented actual realism to it, to where you can jam your receiver, lead them in and out, in and out, you know, stuff like that. Madden 18 came through for us. They added that. But the only reason they added that was for mud. But they made it playable throughout the whole game. Uh, but it was really for mud at the end of the day. Uh, but I'm thankful that it's there nonetheless. Now, one thing I will say, and this is coming from a DB, and every DB can tell you, if you play Madden 18 and you play it as a corner, it is not, they don't, it's still not there yet. The foundation is there, but it's still not there. For instance, if you do a particular jam technique and the receiver does a different one to counteract that, you're automatically beat. For instance, if I go for the hard jam and he gets an inside or outside release, I'm automatically beat. That is so inaccurate. That is inaccurate. Because if you go for a hard jam and you get your hands on, it don't matter if he go inside or outside. The only way that you are going to get beat by going for a hard jam, two-hand jam, is if is if you miss or if you lunge and he uses your weight against you and, and gets by you. You see what I'm saying? Um, if I get two hands on you, I'm following you, whether you're going left, whether you're going right or whatever. So I think that, you know, get with some DBs on that stuff and you can kind of get some improvements, some little bitty tweaks to that system. But I understand at the same time it's a game, so you got to kind of have that win-win thing. Um, but I kind of wish that it was more of a a ratings-based thing, for instance, if because it's it's flawed. It is. If I'm a cornerback and my press is, say, a 90 and above, and I'm going to get to receiver whose release is like a 75 and below, and I'm going for a jam, brother man getting jammed up, I say 85 to 90% of the time. But in, in the way that Madden is set up with those same statistics, if I'm going for a jam and and I do the wrong combination, and he does one that counteracts it, I'm automatically beat. And I just don't feel comfortable with that. Also, experience. If I'm playing corner, and they don't jam my side, I mean, if, if, if I'm playing corner, and they're not throwing to my side because I'm jamming my receiver, I'm following him, I'm shadowing him on his route, I'm covering him like a blanket, I'm on him like white on rice, the game doesn't give you experience points for that. The game only gives cornerbacks experience points whenever you make a play, a knockdown, an interception, a tackle. And that's not realistic to football because everybody knows. Every cornerback, every secondary back will tell you, if you shutting down your man, you are shutting down that side of the field. You are forcing them to go somewhere else with the football. You are doing your job, and that is going to get you more play time on the field. It's going to make you a better corner. Look at guys like Richard Sherman, Daryl Reeves in his prom. Prom time. Dion is a prime example, literally shutting down the complete side of the field. Now, if that was in Madden, Dion wouldn't get a lot of experience points because he wasn't making a lot of plays on the ball. Why? Because there wasn't a lot of balls thrown his way. You get what I'm saying? So kind of correct those in in that regard. But as far as franchise mode, because y'all haven't got off topic because I love football. But franchise mode needs to be more immersive. I think everybody will agree with me when I say we need a real halftime show. Yes, we need it. We need a real halftime show. Yeah. So everybody will agree we need a real halftime show. Um, I kind of find it insulting in a sense, not in a bad way, but it was it was kind of a slap in the face that with Madden 18's halftime show, it's still the same. The only difference is if you skip it, excuse me, the commentators actually make references about you skipping the halftime show. Like, oh, you're not even going to let your players get a drink of water. Well, oh, I guess we're skipping skipping you today, Charles Davis, or something to that effect. Um, 
Give us a real halftime show. Look at NBA Live. NBA Live has a it has an intro. It has a better halftime show than Madden does. Um, look at NBA 2K. They got a pregame show, a postgame show, halftime show, you know, and I feel like we need that in Madden. We need that representation in Madden. We saw that with NFL 2K. It's not something that's patent. Uh, we've had post-game shows, weekly wrap-up shows and things like that in Madden. But this is something that's going to add to the presentation. Now, it was stated that presentation would take a hit in Madden 18 because a lot of those people were working on long shot. Well, long shot's done. We need to see more presentation. This is going to add to the immersion in franchise mode. On top of what we talked about at the beginning of the podcast today with um, free agency being more of a factor, um, practice squad being more of a factor and the draft being more of a factor. Cause let's be real. Like I said, in draft, you can draft whoever it's not going to affect your team. And that is not realistic to football in real life. You don't, you, if you have a bad draft, you pretty much going to have a, a rough season. If you have an awesome draft, if you draft some gems, it can literally turn your season around. Look at what it did for the Cowboys. You see what I'm saying? Look at what it did for the Browns getting a bad draft. They didn't have good seasons. You know, those things need to weigh more heavily in franchise mode. Couple that with presentation, and I feel like if you can do that even just this year alone, you'll turn a lot of people around um, and bring them back to the fold of of franchise because franchise is the core of Madden. It's what's got us where we're at today. It's franchise mode. So with that being said, you know, I feel like, those things will implement it. Now, another thing is your um, coordinators. And I'm going back to NCAA 14 because you, you could even start off as an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator or a head coach. Put that in Madden's career mode for the coaches. Okay. And then in franchise mode, if I want to start out as a coordinator, let me start off as a coordinator or, or, or you know, let me be able to hire and fire offensive and defensive coordinators and a special teams coach uh, because special teams are important as well. These were in previous Madden games, but they took it out for some reason. I mean, you still got a staff and things like that, but it's not way. There is no weight to this. Offensive and defensive coordinators will literally make or break your season. Some of the best head coaches in college and NFL right now started out as coordinators. Nick Saban, Bill Belichick, you know, make it, make it mean something. Make it mean something for us to go out and get these coordinators and stuff like that. Make them heavily sought after and things of that nature. Give them props that will actually boost your team or, or hurt your team. You see what I'm saying? If you got a head coach that's defensively minded, you know, and he's not going to have good offensive capabilities, but if you bring in a great offensive coordinator, that balance is there, and thus the coaching staff. You know, give the coaching staff some attributes that's going to make it matter in franchise mode to have a great coaching staff. Or otherwise, you look like the Dallas Cowboys with Jason Garrett, who just busts every playoff or close to the playoffs with horrible play calling, you know. Those are some things that I feel like could be implemented into Madden's franchise mode. Just a few things that will make the world a difference. Uh, but like I said, presentation. I, me, I'm a presentation guy. When I turn on the game, I want to see it like I'm seeing it on TV. And one big thing is this. EA, I'm pretty sure y'all still have the partnership with ESPN. Can we get more ESPN representation? I'm sure there's some guys at ESPN who would love to do the video stuff, the halftime show, post-game show, pre-game show. And if people want to skip it, let them skip it. But I'm going to watch it because I like that immersion. In NCAA 14, after the kickoff, over after turnovers, punt returns and stuff, what did they do? They had a breakaway and they showed stats. Now, let's take this up a notch. Let's have a breakaway and show a highlight from a different game. That would be awesome. Like they did in NFL 2K. And I, I hate to keep using it, but these are things that the community is asking for. Um, Chris Berman with the halftime show and the post game show would show highlights from other games, actual highlights, not just stats. And I thought that that was really, really, really cool, really immersive, really innovative. And that's something that Madden can pick up and use as well. Uh, being that you are the only NFL licensed team, uh, or, or, or developer or publisher that can make an NFL game. So make it count, put those things out there for the community 
and the community will thank you with record sales for Madden NFL 19. Now, being realistic, y'all, all of this probably wouldn't be able to be implemented once, okay, at once. This is something that's going to happen over time. Um, also, I heard people talking about the Pro Bowl. The reason the Pro Bowl isn't in the game is because the way that the Pro Bowl uniforms are now, with the teams having their, you know, every player having their special team helmet, team logo on their own jerseys, the 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 way that coding works in the video game they're not able to put all of that in there and have it run as smooth as it needs to run now if they had the traditional uniforms with the afc and nfc the pro bowl would still be in the game but let's be real how many of us would actually play the pro bowl me i would especially in a career mode especially in a franchise mode because them jerseys sick and i love playing with nice uniforms but still you know so Maybe they'll work that stuff out. I don't know. Um, I was trying to think of another thing, y'all, because we're running out of time here. Um, I was trying to think of another thing. Uh, we had the Pro Bowl. Uh, what else was it? Um, I know equipment. A lot of people want mouthpieces. So at Equipment Guru, um, mouthpieces this year, yay or nay. I don't really care for them, but the community does. So I'm telling you what the community wants. People would love to have the mouthpieces. Immaculate Vision Gaming is coming out with a college football game. They show mouthpieces and the community lost it. They flipped their wigs, man. So throw mouthpieces in there for equipment. Now, people, we can't have customizable cleats and stuff like that. That's just an NFL licensing thing. The NFL only allows specific shoes. It's not like the NF, NBA and stuff like that. So I don't see anything as far as cleats go. Um, I would like to see hairstyles, be able to design my hair, design my face, uh, design my body, tattoos. That's another thing that people would like to see in the game. Just little things like that that gives people a connection with the game. And, and that's something that I think that if it's implemented, it would be awesome. Because you have it in NBA Live, as well as the ESPN representation in NBA Live. Bring that over to Madden. I think that would help big time. Y'all, that's all the time that we have for today, man. I really, really, really appreciate everybody that tuned in. Y'all, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at DMGaming5. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash C forward slash DMGaming06. Turn on notifications, y'all, because I'm uploading videos every day and sometimes two and three times a day. Check out the playlist for the uh, Madden Immersive and Innovative Series. We started that last year. People were talking about it. The Madden that just came out. We were already talking about 19, but there's a lot of good information there. Down in the comment section down below, y'all, leave what you would like for us to talk about. Stuff that you would like for us to discuss about the franchise going forward and what you want to see in the game so that we can do videos on this stuff and get this stuff out for the community. Thank y'all for watching. Until next time, y'all.